In this video, we'll be having a look at the following calculus problem. We've got a function f which is defined by f of x equals 0 if x is a rational number and 1 if x is a irrational number. So this is a piecewise function and we have to prove that the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x does not exist. The main idea of this question is to see as x approaches 0, um, the main idea is x will alternate between being rational and irrational numbers. So it's going to alternate between 0 and 1 in some way. And the main idea is since it alternates between 0 and 1 in some way, it's not going to approach a limit. So now we can have a look at the formal write-up of the solution. It suffices to prove that just the limit from the right-hand side as x approaches 0 plus of f of x does not exist. And we can use proof by contradiction to prove this. So let's assume that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right-hand side of f of x exists and equals the value L. Now we're going to use the epsilon delta definition of a limit and from the right hand side. So for all epsilon greater than zero there exists a delta greater than zero such that if x is greater than zero and less than delta then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So note we have uh, we have a zero we have x is greater than zero because we are only considering the limit from the right hand side and again you can recall this is because if the limit doesn't exist on the right hand from the right hand side it will not exist from both directions so now we're going to set a fixed value of epsilon which will be 0 0.1 and we will show that there does not exist a delta that satisfies uh, this condition over here so this means uh, by our assumption, there should exist a delta greater than zero such that if x is greater than zero and less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than 0 0.1. Okay, now we'll do something interesting, which is we'll let n be a positive integer and it will be large enough uh, to satisfy the square root of 2 divided by n is less than delta and since n is positive we know square root of 2 divided by n will be greater than 0 and the reason we're doing this is since the square root of 2 is known to be irrational and when you divide it by n which is a positive integer uh, just make this look like an n okay so the square root of n will also the square root of 2 divided by n will also be irrational and yeah this is because n is rational and a non-zero number so since square root 2 divided by n is rational it me uh, is irrational it means f of square root 2 divided by n is equal to 1 and this is using the definition of f of x equals 1 when x is irrational okay and now, using the fact that square root of 2 over n is greater than 0 and less than delta, it also means f of root 2 divided by n minus l absolute value must be less than 0 0.1. So this is using the fact that we set epsilon equal to 0 0.1 at the start. And since f of root 2 over n is equal to 1, we have the absolute value of 1 minus l, or that's the same as absolute value of l minus 1 is less than 0 0.1 this means l is going to be quite close to 1 so we have l minus 1 is less than 0 0.1 and greater than negative 0 0.1 so 0 0.9 is less than l and l is less than 1.1 so we have l is close to 1 okay but now uh, instead of considering square root 2 divided by n, we can now just consider the number 1 over n. So 1 over n 
is less than square root 2 divided by n and it's also greater than 0 and we know square root 2 divided by n is less than, uh, less than delta. So now 1 over n is a rational number between 0 and delta which means using the piecewise definition of the function f of 1 over n is going to be equal to 0. And also using the fact that 1 over n is between 0 and delta, it follows that the absolute value of f of 1 over n minus l is less than 0 0.1. And now we put substitute 0 into here. And this gives us the absolute value of l is less than 0 0.1, so l is going to be close to 0. We have negative 0 0.1 is less than l, which is less than 0 0.1. However, this is a problem because earlier we showed that L has to be between 0 0.9 and 1.1, .1, so here we get L is close to 0, but here we get L is close to 1, so we get two pieces of contradictory information. So this leads to a final contradiction. So such a value of L cannot exist that satisfies these conditions. So this leads to our final conclusion that the limit of f of x as x approaches 0 does not exist. And remember this is because uh, this proves the right hand, this contradiction proves the right hand side limit does not exist but in order for the overall limit of x going to 0, in order for that to exist both the left hand and right hand limits must, must exist so since we've shown that one of the limits don't exist then we know the overall limit is not going to exist either. Okay so that concludes the solution to this limit problem. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.